If we look at the list of challenges, then we see that we made good progress. We only miss Overachiever, Blocky's Revenge and Pirate's Treasure. Blocky's Revenge was one of the first things I stumbled over when I was just exploring the island in the Let's Play. So just a quick recap. We walked into this cave that quickly turned into some kind of underground bunker and we arrived at the very first door where we simply have to toggle the button. After progressing through this portal-esque test facility, we realized that essentially the game implements logical gates. The buttons you can toggle are inputs and through a combination of logic gates such as NOT or XOR gates, you have to get the desired output to open the door. So for example, the very first door was an input line, a NOT gate and an output. The second door introduced the AND gate, which means both inputs have to be toggled on or has an input as 1 or high or whatever you want to call it. So it starts out to be a fairly easy logic puzzle that seems to increase a bit in complexity and in introducing more gates. However, at some point we walk around the corner and reach the final room where we see this monster. So during the let's play I already said that it's pretty clear that these are logical gates and we somehow have to find the correct input to toggle the final block to open the door. But the amount of inputs is just crazy. Actually it's 32 inputs or 32 bits. If you could find a very efficiently implemented algorithm of this logic check then it could be maybe be brute forced but if you have a well implemented algorithm you could also just map out the logical combinations and solve it yourself. Maybe if you have it properly drawn on a piece of paper rather than a cluttered room like this, it's even pretty easy to solve it by hand or at least use something like Z3 which I have shown on this channel before. Either way, we somehow have to figure out how the inputs are combined with the logical gates to produce the output. And a very clear path to get to that would be just to grab a club mate, put on some hacker sounding music and just write everything down. It's just laborious work. And you have to make sure to not make a mistake. So I was kind of dreading that idea. Now if I would have played the CTF I would have to make a decision based on the time constraint of the competition and maybe then I would have just done it or asked others in the teams to do it because once it's all mapped out you can just throw set 3 at it to solve it. But I had no pressure and I was kind of dreading doing that. Similarly to how we found the location of the golden eggs by static analysis, I was actually hoping I could find the logic implementation in the libgame logic library. Then I could either efficiently brute force the input over a few days or extract the logical operations to solve it with Z3. So I sat there in Binary Ninja looking for any function that could be related to this challenge. Of course, first search term would be blocky or block and we see some things like flag of the block or the blocky chest but nothing directly connected to the logical gates. Nothing about input or output. But when looking around more, especially in other classes, I saw functions related to circuit. And that totally makes sense, it's basically an electronic circuit with logic gates, inputs and outputs. And the player has a function set circuit inputs and perform set circuit inputs, which requires a string and an integer as parameter. And from looking at the init circuit states function we learn that each stage has a name, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 and final stage. So it would totally make sense if the function set circuit inputs is called with the stage name and the state of the inputs as an integer. And the final stage for example is exactly 32 inputs, 32 bits, so exactly one unsigned integer like the parameter. And you could also easily verify that by using the LD preload method introduced at the very beginning of the series. When you can simply overwrite this function and print the value of the parameters when it's called and then when you try to toggle the first input you see the output here. However, because we hijacked this function entirely, the original function is not called anymore unless it doesn't do anything besides printing this here. But now we verified the parameters. I looked into the input functions but none really looked like implementing this kind of logic. Client world set circuit inputs just does some networking stuff. Client handler is very linear and short so no real logic in here. You can also already see a lot of other weird functions here and they are originating from standard templates I think. Like vectors, function pointers and stuff like that. But I had my highest hopes for the circuit output functions. I was hoping they would kinda go over the input and update the logical gates. 
I mean, the client displays the logical outputs with the glowing red connection, so I thought this information, which line to turn on or off, should be somewhere in here, right? And the player get circuit outputs looked kinda promising. It's looping over maybe some vectors and setting single bits and testing some values, so, so it looked good. And at this point I was also trying to think about how would I implement this? Would I have some kind of tree or network with inputs and gates and some kind of loop as walking the tree and evaluating each logical gate? But I don't know. How do you implement something like this? If you have different ideas how this could be implemented, you would know better what to look for. But for example, I would write classes or structs implementing each gate and just hook them all up. But that's not the case here and so I couldn't find a satisfying answer for myself. It seemed non-trivial or rather non-basic, it's not like everybody would implement it the same way. There are very different options how to do it and so I kinda imagined these vectors with elements would somehow implement that. I tried to debug this and other parts with GDB but couldn't find anything and gave up. And I'm still not 100% sure, I'm like 75% sure that our client doesn't actually have this logic gate information and the loops we are seeing there are simply handling just part of it like looping over the final result. What I've just described I did in parallel to other challenges, much earlier and at the time I didn't have the network proxy yet. But now I do have the proxy so I decide to look at the packets being sent and received related to the blocky dungeon. And it's super easy to see the packets being sent when buttons are toggled. It's a very simple packet, it starts with a packet ID, hex3031, which is actually in ASCII the digit 0 and 1, so binary bit 0 and 1, kinda fitting. Now that I come think of it, I think the two byte packet identifier all have some meaning. Health is a plus plus, mana is MA, jumping is JP, the position packet is MV, maybe for move. Oh man, that makes all so much more sense now. Anyway, in the circuit packet we can see some ASCII data included again and the length of that data. So we unpack that and then we have an integer. And when toggling these buttons we see the value change. And actually if you look at the bits of it, instead of hex it becomes much clearer. So here we have the circuit input unsigned integer. But also with the server response packet we get some additional data. So I had to modify my parser to pass the original to the individual function as well because this part we only look at when the server is sending it. And that turns out to be the state of the whole circuit. It took me quite a bit until I figured that out, but basically I went back to the start and started simple. And the first stage seems to have three output bits, which I thought was weird at first, but then I realized each bit represents one important output line. And in another puzzle we have six output lines. This also made me realize the first byte, or actually two bytes, are the number of bits that will follow. So here we have six output bits, and in the final stage we have hex AE, so like 174 bits or so. And 174 divided by 8 is 21 point something, so we need 22 bytes to hold the 174 bits. And that is exactly what we see here. Awesome, right? So this packet is coming from the server when we set a particular input, which is another indication that actually the client does not know how to set the output lines. It simply sets it to whatever the server says it. That might be the case, but however later I remembered the offline mode. And then there is no server involved, and also in offline mode the blocky puzzle works. So the client somehow has to know. So if anybody reverse engineers the client and is able to find exactly where that is implemented, please let me know. But now we can also use our proxy to inject the packet to send to the server, so we can set input to whatever we want, very comfortably without having to walk to each button. See, I didn't press the button, I just faked the packet. The server calculated which bits has to be set, returns that information and the client turns those particular lines on and off. At this point I was wondering how to proceed. Like I said, I didn't want to transcribe the whole circuit by hand on a piece of paper which seemed super tedious. I wanted to be more clever and I had one other idea. I don't know if it's going to be feasible and it's not something I would have attempted during the CTF but I was wondering, could I approach this challenge with machine learning? I always wanted to have reason to try out some machine learning and maybe that's it. We have input bits, some unknown function doing something with it and essentially a bunch of output bits. Isn't that something where machine learning can be really good at? But in order to do some machine learning we need a lot of training data. So I modified the proxy to inject random set circuit input packets in a loop and in the response parser I look at what the server sends us 
extract the input state along with the output bits and write it to a file. Now I just have to trigger sending those packets and we can see how essentially the circuit input is brute forced. These are all random input attempts and it looks super cool. Here's some shots from different angles. I think it's awesome. I could look at this for ages. So the response is then written to a file and this is how the file then looks like. Each line simply has the 32-bit input bits and the 170-something output bits. What we can do with this data, we will explore in another video. I've linked the dataset below, so feel free to play around with it as well.